Hello and welcome back to Creative Peggeeping. I actually just turned off my filters and my pump that powers my entire fish room so I can quickly, before I show you the cool stuff, show you all my boys. Even though I fed them earlier, they're kind of begging for food. So we've got the half moon koi, the koi that marbled, the father who started it all, his son Arnold, a raspberry, blueberry, uh, this is Samurai. I think I had a name for him and I completely forgot what it was. But that doesn't matter. What matters is, dun dun dun, we are starting to jar the baby bettas. Now for those of you that might be new, when you breed bettas, because they are aggressive, you have to temporarily jar them. This is only for a short while to grow them out a little more before you sell them and they go on to their new homes, which will hopefully have nice, beautiful fish tanks that will have heat and filters and plants and space to swim. So this is completely temporary. When you jar your bettas, you have to make sure you either heat the jars from the bottom using flex watt or a heat cable, or you have to heat the entire room. My room is currently 82 degrees. This makes sure that the jars stay nice and warm and toasty for these fish because they are tropical. Now these jars have to be changed out completely every day or every other day at the maximum because they are not filtered. This will help keep the water clean for the baby bettas. Now these guys are actually quite small for their age. They are four months old, but they're only about uh, medium sized. This is because I wasn't power growing them like my previous spawn. When you power grow betta fish, what you do is you feed them very, very high fat, high protein diet and do very, very frequent large water changes. Uh, what I did is I actually kind of reduced the amount of water changes by a little bit. That's banana barking in the background. So I only did water changes on the main grow out tank about uh, twice a week, 90% water changes. And then what I did was feed them a more varied diet. I didn't do such a high fat diet like usually. My big concern was that uh, fatty liver disease is very prevalent in bettas. And my worry is when I power grow them, the cool thing about power growing is, you know, you get big fish like Arnold who didn't want to cooperate. He just swam away. Arnold is a big boy like his, oh, his daddy, Sam Rice flaring at me. Of course you would. This is old, old daddy samurai who's, who's having a flare party. So you get quite large fish. The downside is, in my opinion, their health isn't as robust. Now I do have some older runs from last year's spawn. These guys are going to be sold very, very soon. I've just been holding onto them longer so I can medicate them for the disease that's kind of been going around in my fish room and they just ate. So they're kind of resting and their plants up there. So these girls, these three girls who are two koi and one cellophane, were nice and chubby because they just ate. Uh, they're a lot smaller, but I noticed that their health is a lot better than the really, really large females that I power grew. Now they can see each other a little bit. They're partially carded, so they can do some flaring. And there's some poo right there. We have more females over here that are actually napping uh, in the flowers. This is why I like to put plants in my jars. Now these are one gallon jars and these are two females I am keeping. So this is a longer term setup for them and that is why it is a lot bigger. Now there you see a lot of bubbles in the jars. This is because I just did the water change before filming. So there's still a lot of oxygen from the water from the tap. So that's kind of what I've been up to. We mostly have these dark bodied males and females. These will predominantly be males because these are the ones I jarred first. I have this one, which is actually marbling right now and will probably lighten up and change color. We have more dark one. We have a koi that's in the early stages of turning into a koi. And then we have another koi who has actually developed uh, his pattern a lot more and then these are definitely boys these are two of my they're gonna get big and they're very feisty and they're already kind of flaring at each other and they can see each other so all of these guys are called uh, placat 
koi and they're marbles. And what marble means is they have a special uh, jumping gene which allows them to change color during their lives. One good example is Samurai over here. He used to actually be kind of looking like this color. So he was red and black and had a lot of white on him and now he is fully blue and red and black. And his son, Arnold, who decided he did not want to cooperate. He's he's grumpy because I turned off the filtration, so he does he does not want to come out. Where did you go, Arnold? But he is also marbling as well, but he is still showing his koi pattern. This guy used to be transparent, and he is a koi as well, but he also darkens. So koi will change colors. So if you do purchase fish from me in the future, there's a possibility that, you know, the fish might stay the koi pattern, like this girl will probably stay permanently koi and this girl will because they're already about 14 months old and they're still maintaining their pattern. So sometimes, and then this girl too, sometimes you get fish that will maintain their pattern and sometimes they will change color over time. This one will more likely change color faster because she, um, he or she is already uh, starting to, to get a lot of black. So that's how you can tell. This one has a better chance of possibly retaining koi coloration so we will see in the future uh, for those of you that are interested in purchasing fish from me these guys are not available yet I am still gonna be growing them out to make sure they're nice and big and plump and ready to be shipped I also want to prepare them for eating a variety of foods I want to make sure that the fish I uh, have, I uh, will eat flake food and pellet food and frozen food and live food. They will eat whatever you will offer them. So these guys are four months old, they're not yet ready. Uh, if you do want to get first dibs at buying fish, I do have a Patreon where if you become a Patreon supporter in the Betta Buddy tier, you will be one of the first people to be able to purchase Bettas when they become available. I will announce it and post pictures on Patreon and it's first come first serve and then whatever other fish will be available that don't get sold get put on my website creativepetkeeping.com i usually make an announcement to everyone else and they can be purchased online but another cool thing i want to try is with these darker colored uh, possibly these are all probably males. I want to sell them at Aquashella, which is a convention slash kind of music festival. Oh, and Arnold decided to come out. Check out how cool Arnold is. He used to only be black and white, and now he has blues and reds. He's what's called a galaxy koi. Uh, galaxy koi have a lot of iridescence and blues. He might over time turn into his father though, although he has been marbling very very slowly and he's been holding his pattern quite well but anyways before i got distracted i will be at aquashella as one of the youtuber youtube creators at the event it will be in um, august i think it's 18th and 19th i will post more information they do have a website and i think i'll be selling some of these guys there i won't be selling the koi colored ones but I think I will sell the dark bodied ones so that way if you are coming to the event and would like to purchase a fish and don't want to spend money on shipping this might be a cool opportunity for you to purchase a creative pet keeping fish so that is my update for you guys also check out how cute these girls are they're sleeping in the flowers which is why I usually have plants this is Anubius and also uh, some moss. This is why I actually make sure to add plants in all of my containers. Bettas love to sleep in plants. They feel comfortable and secure. So I like adding them into all of my jars. Not only do they help keep the water clean, but they all, oh, she, she came out. This is my beautiful yellow and cellophane and black koi female. But these guys in, really enjoy the plants. It makes them feel very secure. Um, these guys are not covered because they've been in here so long they don't even want to jump out. But when you jar babies, and these, these this is the first day these babies have been jarred, uh, they tend to want to jump out. And usually bettas will jump, so that's why this is all covered, just to make sure, because they're kind of confused why they're in a jar. They don't understand this weird circular place with a see-through force field that they're in so that is my video i hope that you enjoyed it if you did be sure to subscribe check out my beta playlist and i'll see you in the next